again, everyone. I'm Jeff Brandon here with Alan Raleigh, and we're here once again for another edition of Norristown High Football. Tonight, the Eagles take on the Ghosts of Abington, Alan. And going into this ball game, you'd have to say both teams match up pretty evenly. Uh, I think the most indicative point being uh, their records are absolutely identical: seven and two overall, four and two in the league. And of course, this game will determine a share of second place in the Suburban One League's National Conference. Matter of fact, prior to this ball game last week, Abington had a very good chance to be up for a shot at sharing the conference title. Unfortunately, they went out to a 12-0 lead on the Chamonix, then gave up 30 unanswered points and <laughs> dropped the game 30 to 12. That's why they're in this situation. And that's why tonight Nishamani is playing Pensbury for the top spot. That's right. Nishamani and Pensbury going at it for number one. And Norristown and Abington here, uh, as you said, Alan, going for a battle of number two. The winner of this ball game, the loser of the Nishamani Pensbury game, will share second place in the Suburban One Lake National Division. Uh, now, I think both this ball game, even though it uh, doesn't have that going for the title uh, aspect to it, uh, means a lot to both ball clubs, I think, especially Norristown wants to go into their Thanksgiving Day contest uh, on, on a good note. That's right. They're coming off a big victory here last week at home. And of course, coming into this one, I think that you're looking at two clubs that started off the year in similar positions, both of them being young, rebuilding. A lot of their veteran starters had been lost to graduation, and both of them come up with pretty good squads, as we have seen. Well, you mentioned something, uh, Norristown coming off a big win over William Tennant. I was extremely impressed by Norristown in that game last week uh, here at Roosevelt Field. The Eagles put put on their uh, their biggest offensive show of the year, and they just blew William Tennant away. William Tennant, a, a club that was uh, was considered a contender at the beginning of the season. That's very true, but I think we also saw another key factor as far as the Eagles' success this season. Last week in the ball game, the first half, the Eagles were turnover prone. Of course, once they got their act together in the second half, they absolutely destroyed William Tennant. Once again, I think tonight a big factor for Norristown is going to be their defense. Abington boasts a very potent running attack led by Bill Freeman, Chris Roberts, and Tom Washington. They don't throw the ball that often, and it's going to be a real big test for the Eagles' front line. Well, just to demonstrate, I think, how little Abington does throw the ball, their quarterback, Charles Griffin, also plays safety for them. He certainly can't be that concerned about the Charles Griffin's throwing arm if they've got him playing safety. On the other side of the coin, though, Abington's defense is going to be have to, or will have to be concerned with uh, Norristown's multi-dimensional attack due to the fact that Jacques Rochette already over 800 yards, Van James has picked up around 400, and Frank Asano, 15 touchdowns and over 1,000 yards passing already this season. That's right, and Frank Asano is uh, such a talented ball player, and I'm sure Roger Grove has to be more than ecstatic that he's got Frank Asano coming back next year to lead his Eagle offensive attack. And as you say, Frank not only can throw the ball exceptionally well, he runs a fantastic play off the bootleg. That's true, and we have seen Frank develop so well. A matter of fact, last week's ball game here at Roosevelt Field against Tennant, was a prime example. Frank was a little off with his passes early in the contest, got picked off twice, but then you could see that maturity developing. He came back, had an explosive second half, and led the Eagles to another big victory. Okay, we're just about ready to begin the ball game here, folks. As you uh, can see on your screen, Abington in the white jerseys and the maroon pants. Uh, they'll be kicking off to Narstown. Narstown in their all blue uniforms. Kicking off number two, John Ripley for the Ghosts. It's a short kick, it'll be taken by one of the up men for Narstown. That's number 22 for the Eagles. Keith Ellis, who falls on the ball, and Norristown will take over first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. And this game, of course, being brought to you by the Norristown Area School District under the direction of Tony Coya and Sam Galbraith. Tony Coya here at Roosevelt Field this week, Jeff, supervising things. And, of course, we have to mention viewers of our last contest against William Tennant. We mentioned quite a few times how it was about 22 degrees. Tony Coya was at home in front of the fireplace. That's right. Tonight, very nice night, about 50 degrees, and he is here. Well, Tony knows how to pick him. I'll say that for him. Frank Asano setting up. We've got a little motion on the line. And our very first play from scrimmage, Alan, we've got an offsides penalty that's going to be called against Abington, I believe. And I hope that doesn't uh, portend an evening uh, that is penalty ridden. We don't need to be sitting here until 10:30, 11 o'clock at night because these guys want to commit penalties. And I think you hit the nail on the head earlier. Uh in the pre-game show when you talked about uh, the turnovers. Norristown would have a, a great chance at the league title. In fact, they should win the league title if they hadn't had two ball games where they were plagued by the turnovers and the combination of that and penalties, which cost them the ball game. The game against Pensbury, they lost by a point. The game against the Chamonix, the same situation. Exactly, but I think that's what happens when you have a young squad, and both of these teams have demonstrated that this season. All right, the Eagles start off their first play from scrimmage at first and five. They hand off to Jock East Rochette, who's been the, uh, the mainstay of their offense this year uh, as far as uh, a running standpoint is concerned. And Rochette good for about three yards. That'll leave them 
Oh, that's a second down and two yards to go for Norristown. And of course, before we forget, we'd like to thank Dave Finlander, who's going to be running the camera for us this evening. Dave also manages to pick a nice warm night to show up for this contest. Well, I, I think later on in this broadcast, we're going to have to talk about the reemergence of Tony Koya and, and his... I'm waiting. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I want to get back down to the play on the field, but Tony Koya is such an important aspect of this broadcast for us. Norristown looks like they're close to a first down. In fact, I believe they do have a first down. That's right. The official signal first down. First and, dan first and ten from the 37-yard line for Norristown. But Tony here, of course, filled in for you, Alan, for two weeks, did a stellar job. We had those thousands of fan letters. As you mentioned last week, we had the parade uh, for Tony, and, and yet you're back, Alan, and I think that shows a lot of courage on your part to step in for a man like Tony Koya. Well, I thought it was part of the job, and it's just something I had to do. That's and, great. But, you know, I think uh, Coach Roger Grove here as Frank Cassano drops back. A quick little pass. Overthrown, though, intended receiver Andy Town, who was going down the left side of the field. Definitely a timing play there. Frank just unloaded it. Andy couldn't catch up to the ball, Well, I think though. that time uh, Frank was getting a little pressure, but Andy also got off the line a little slowly that time, thanks to some good D by the Abington defense. But I just wanted to point out, Coach Roger Grove, though, did say, hey, we can't win without Tony Coya, and he showed up here tonight. I'm telling you. I am telling you. So the Eagles face with a second and ten, just about a minute and a half gone in the contest so far. What do you say here? Second and ten, put it in the air again? Throw the ball. You know, Billy Evans has been very quiet. He, of course, number 11. We have offsides by Abington's number, who was at 77, 77. Eric Buxer. And that's twice for him tonight in the first uh, four plays of the ball game. Well, I think they're just a little over anxious. I think they were looking maybe perhaps for a passing play there. Of course, you see the Narstown cheerleaders. Uh, have you managed to learn their names yet, Jeff? Well, I know the one on the end was D. Benny. As we get into the middle of the lineup, uh, Sean Zumo, I know who that is. Uh, Ellen Flannery out there in front for the Norristown cheerleaders. But I must say, my, my knowledge is uh, sparse in comparison with years past. Well, that is your halftime assignment. <laughs> but I wanted to say, Billy Evans started off this season very quickly, number 11, but he's been relatively quiet the last few ball games. Andy Town has been... Uh, has been Frank Cassano's main target. And he's looking for him again there. Oh, that pass was just uh, for Bobby Carson was intended, but there was no way Frank was going to complete that pass. There were three uh, Abington defenders right there. He tried to force it in. That should have look, looked someplace else. That's it, exactly. Billy Evans was running a short little post pattern. He was open on the other side, but uh, that time Frank just had an, exactly one thought in his mind. He was going over the middle, and you saw how he rifled that ball. So Frank shows he has a good arm, but he just hasn't learned sometimes how to check off right. and go to a secondary receiver. That's right. Brian Murphy, number 86, was open on that last play. And we get another break in the action. We'll give you the starting players for both Norristown and Abington. Third and five here. They go to Van James, and the Abington defense swarms. There's a fumble. That ball's loose, folks. Abington recovers it. That's number 76, Brian Beebe falls on the ball for the Ghosts. And right off the bat, Abington gets a big break. And Alan, I, I swear that every game this year I've seen that happen in Norristown. They start off the ball game giving the other, the other team a, a golden opportunity. That's it exactly, and it is a golden one with the ball being placed on the 39-yard line in Eagles territory. That time, Van James was hit, then a couple of other guys made the secondary hits on him. And then he just kind of dropped the ball. I don't think he, it was knocked out of his hands or anything. So it's up to the Eagles defense here to hold the ghosts. All right, their quarterback, number four, Charles Griffin. Griffin hands off to Bill Freeman up the middle that time. And the ghosts offensive line makes a nice surge out of it and a big gain for Abington. And to run down the starters for you for the ghosts, uh, they're split in, number 84, Larry Faison. Their tackle on the, the left side, number 52, Bill Strang. Guard, number 55, Joe D'Elia. The center, number 53, Mike Jones. The right guard, number 76, Brian Beebe. The tackle, number 78, Alan Mitchell. And the end, number 88, Tim Hack. Down onto the field, it's second down and four for the Ghosts. To Freeman again up the middle. And he's good, close to the first down. Perhaps third and short. And of course, that's number 42, Bill Freeman at fullback for the Ghosts. Their tailback, number 20, Chris Roberts. And at the slot, number 10, Tom Washington. Uh, for the Ghosts, Freeman, Washington, both seniors. But uh, Chris Roberts, a very impressive looking sophomore this season. He's had some big games for Abington. All right, the Ghosts, uh, as I thought, are faced with a third down and one situation. Of course, we're just into this ball game. Nine minutes left to go in the first quarter. Griffin goes up the middle once again to Freeman, and they've got the first down. So I think we've uh, seen what the Ghosts' offensive attack is going to look like. Hand off to Bill Freeman, then hand off again to Bill Freeman, and maybe one more time to Bill Freeman. Well, they're going to eventually uh, mix it up a little bit, but they're going to run right to the middle of the Eagles' wall because I don't think Narstan's really been tested this year 
on those, the run. And those players up front for Norristown, number 77, Theron Ellis, number 99, Greg Reinhardt, number 50, uh, Joe Glisson. We'll get the rest of them for you in just a moment. First and 10. Hand off to Freeman off the left side this time. He stopped, but after a gain of, oh, it looks like three or four yards on the play. Also in there for Norristown, number two, Andy Town, safety. Number one, Luther Harling at the corner. Number 46, Dwayne Sanders at the other corner. Number 35, Jockeys Rochette at linebacker. Number eight, Brooke Bug is in there. Number 78, Bill Angelusi. Number 86, Brian Murphy. Up, up the middle this time. The ball is given to number 43, Larry Waugh. Oh, Abington just picking up ground whenever they want to so far in this initial drive. In case you missed it, Narstown's van, James fumbling the ball, giving Abington possession in Narstown's 39-yard line. That's where they started this series. And your other starter in there for Narstown, number 54, Mike Taylor at linebacker next to Jack East Rochette. They hand off again off the left side. Freeman this time uh, carries the ball for a gain of about six yards on the play. Will make it second down and four, and the Ghosts can get a first down before scoring a touchdown. Uh, the first down marker at about the one yard line, Allen. Pretty good sized crowd here. Nice I was, evening. I was just thinking that. It's a very nice evening for November, folks. Temperature probably in about the low 50s. They go to number 42, Freeman again, and he stopped short of the touchdown. We'll see where the officials spot the ball. And we'll make it third down and a short one. Griffin hands off to Freeman off the right side, and this time the Norristown defense equal to the task. That was third and one, folks. Now we've got a fourth and one situation. Alan, what does Abington do? Go well, for it. <laughs> if they put the ball in the air, you and I will be the most surprised people here. I would have to say that maybe a handoff to Freeman, perhaps, since he's only carried the ball seven times already, might be in order. That's why they pay me the big bucks to analyze these plays. You, you and John Madden, uh, the experience you have in the game of football is overwhelming. We've got a timeout on the field, folks, for a measurement. They've got that fourth down situation, we believe, but we'll see after the official measurement. And by the way, I understand the CBS chalkboard, Tony Coya did bring it with him tonight, and we'll be here after halftime. We're looking forward to diagramming those plays for you, folks. We want to thank Tony and, of course, the Norristown School District for uh, supplying that big technological advance for us. The pitch this time goes out to number 20, Chris Roberts. Roberts is into the end zone, touchdown. And that was a surprise, it really was. They had that fourth down and one situation. Well, that was a good play, though. Uh, caught on the sidelines for Abington that time. Continually, they had run the ball straight up the middle. That time, quarterback rolled out Charles Griffin. He pitched at the last second before he was hit to Chris Roberts, who had plenty of running room around the right side. And number two, John Ripley to add the extra point for the Ghosts. It's up, and it's good. So make it seven to nothing, Ghosts. And they get on the board with a very impressive drive, their first time down the field. I'll tell you what, Alan, Norristown defense better make some adjustments real quick. Abington didn't have to go to the air once, as you mentioned, and they were so effective as to, uh, I think, put fear into the Norristown defensive unit. Well, what has to be most frustrating for Norristown's defensive coordinators there on the field is that you know Abington is going to be running the ball right up the middle, and you can't stop them. So what do you do? And it'll be interesting to see. I think it's crucial here. Norristown gave Abington their first seven points after Van James turned it over. All they had to do was run 39 yards. They got into the end zone. I think it's very important here they put in a good drive and get some points on the board themselves, or they could find themselves in a very early hole. I agree with you. And the Abington Ghosts uh, have a nice contingent of fans here tonight. I'm very impressed with that. 
um, supporting their fans uh, on the away circuit. That's great to see. And they brought their cheerleaders, their marching band, brought everybody with them. That's unusual. Most teams you find come in here, and there's about four fans over in their side, unless it's Bishop <laughs> Kenrick, and that's, that's about right. it. And Ripley this time gets off a high boot. It's still taken by one of your up men, though, for Norristown. Around the left side is number 32 for the Eagles, Jim Hammond. Hammond is finally pulled down at about the 33, 34 yard line of Norristown. And starting on defense for Abington, at left end we've got number 84, Larry Faison, at left tackle number 77, Eric Buxer. At right tackle, number 76, Brian Beebe. At right end, number 44, Robert Grasty. We'll give you the rest of those in the Norristown offensive starters in just a moment. Cassano going to drop back the pass on first down up into the pocket, and he is sacked. And that's number 84, Larry Faison, right in there on Frank Cassano. And, Alan, that's a problem we saw Norristown experience earlier in the season. Right. Frank is an extremely mobile quarterback. However, uh, Norristown's Offensive line at times has had some problems giving him protection. That time Frank was looking over the middle. Andy Town was wide open. He didn't have an Abington defender within five yards on him. But that time uh, the pocket just collapsed on Frank. And it's second down and 14 for Norristown from their own 30-yard line. The quick out to Bobby Carson. He's going to have to run with the ball. And he makes up the yardage lost on the last play and perhaps another yard or two. It's going to be... Oh, third down and eight, I'd say. Also in there for Abington at the uh, the linebacking positions, number 55, Joe D'Elia, number 66, Bo Markowitz, number 54, Joe Castor, number 31, Rodney Johnson. At the corners for the Ghosts, number 43, Larry Waugh, and number 10, Tom Washington, playing safety, as we mentioned before, number four, Charles Griffin. Of course, in there for Narstown, your quarterback, number five, Frank Cassano, your running backs, number 40, Van James, number 35, Jacques Rochette, Wide to the right, number 11, Billy Evans. Wide to the left, number two, Andy Town. Cassano on third and eight. He's going to watch that blind side, and he's sacked again by Larry Faison. And Narstown's going to have to punt, Allen. Big, impressive show by the Abington Ghost uh, defensive line. And that time, the Narstown uh, offense kept Jacques Rochette in the backfield as a blocker. And even with the additional manpower, they could still not buy some time for uh, Frank Cassano. If I were Roger Grove, I'd be a little bit worried at this point. <laughs> Frank Cassano, of course, also handling the punting chores for Narstan. He drops back. Cassano, a low snap. No rush, though, and he cuts off a nice line drive boot. No hang time. Brian Murphy there for the Eagles on the coverage. He'll let the ball roll out of bounds, and the Ghosts will take over from their own 33-yard line this time. Well, it'll be interesting here. You know Abington's going to come out running the ball again. Let's see if Narstan's come up with any new wrinkles in their defensive strategy to stop them. You know what I noticed here tonight, Alan? Uh, a large contingent of Narstown teachers here to watch the Eagles play. And as we've mentioned in previous games, it's really nice to see the teachers come out and be involved in something that the students are very concerned with. It, it's a nice bond between students and teachers. Up the middle to Freeman again. Well, you know, it's only about time because uh, for years they've always been talking about the students' apathy towards the sporting events, no one wanting to come out and support them, dismal crowds even when you have a winning team. And really you have to show support from uh, the top down. We always see George Ortliff, we see Barry Spencer here, the, pres uh, the principal of Narstown. They're here all the time. You've seen the teachers here, it sets a good example in the long run. And the school board members. They That's true, show up always. At that time, the Eagle defense holds uh, Freeman to two yards. They go to Chris Roberts around the left side this time. He picks his hole nicely. Very quick runner, Roberts looks to be. He uh, darting in and out of positions. He was finally knocked down by the uh, Eagles secondary, but not, not until he had picked up another five yards. Make it third down and two for the Ghosts. Well, Roberts, I think he's about 5'10", 175, just a sophomore, but a very elusive runner, and he also has a very explosive fast step. As you could see that time, he hit the line very quickly. And then after that, it was really pretty much his own, picking up those three or four yards. He didn't have too much blocking in front of him. Third and three, three minutes exactly left to go here in the opening quarter. Almost an offsides by the Eagles. They go to Freeman up the middle. He's got the first down easily. 
You know, what I think I said earlier in the contest was that the Narstown had not really been tested against a strong running team, and I think those words are coming back to haunt them here. Their defense has just not been able to get on track and stop the ghost attack on the ground. Defensing against the passes that we've seen all season long is Narstan's definite strong points. They get a very good rush led by Theron Ellis, and their secondary is fantastic. Freeman up the middle, and he's just dragging players with him, Alan. He had Brooke Bug holding on to him, Dwayne Sanders, Jockeys Rochette. Bill Freeman. Freeman is a bull. That's right, six foot, almost 200 pounds, a senior. And as you said, he just keeps those legs churning and drags the people with him. And I'll tell you one thing. Thank you. With the running game, at least the clock goes. It's been a quick first quarter. It certainly has. Just two been. minutes left. Could have used that last week when it was cold. Yes, yes. Instead, <laughs> they decided to throw the ball 40 times. <laughs> this time, they go to number 43, Larry Wall. And Wall has a big gain up the middle. I don't know, Alan. Am I, uh, is my perception off, or does Amington look bigger than Narstown? They seem to be standing taller than the Eagles. I'll tell you, the, the ghost offensive line is very big. Matter of fact, let's just check that out for you real quick. Bill Strange, number 52, the left tackle, listed at uh, 6'2", 185, no midget there. Joe Delia, uh, <laughs> Delia. Delia, 55, their uh, left guard. You know, it's only 5'9", 180. And the uh, ghosts this time go up the middle once again, Narstown defense. Holds the ghost to only about a yard, maybe two. We'll make it second down and eight. Well, your center for Abington, number 53, Mike Jones, 5'11", 185. He's also a junior. Your guard on the right side of the line, number 76, Brian Beebe. He goes both ways, 6'3", 225. And then finally, the right tackle, Alan Mitchell, number 78, 6'4", 240. So the right side of the line definitely has a big advantage over Narstown's defensive line play. I can smell it too, but I didn't think it was. It's a feature section. It's probably magicianal. <laughs> Up the middle once again, Larry Waugh, the ball handler for the Ghosts. And he's brought down by Greg Reinhardt, number 99 for the Eagles. And as you said, to coin a, an Alan Raleigh phrase, Alan, uh, Greg Reinhardt, no midget either. No, I was just <laughs> looking at some, something. <laughs> Boy, they come back to haunt you all the time. Woo. Number 78, Alan Mitchell, the right tackle. I did tell you he was 6'4", 240. He's only a sophomore. <laughs> oh, wait till he grows up. <laughs> he's a growing boy, yes. <laughs> Scary. Scary. I bet his parents put a lot of money out on food for him. <laughs> Third down and three for the Ghosts. And Allen will be coming after you after this contest. Griffin goes to Roberts. Roberts very close to the first down. I think we might have a measurement on this play. And this will be the final play of the uh, first quarter. Just two seconds left. And there we go. Whistle ending the first quarter. Narstown trailing seven to nothing. Thanks to a turnover. First series for the Eagles. They fumbled the ball. Van James did at the 39-yard line. Abington just ran it right into the end zone, kept pounding away at the Narstown defense, and they were successful. Chris Roberts going in from one yard out with about five and a half minutes to go in the opening stanza. I'm crushed too. 